Hi, I'm Vanessa from speakenglishwithvanessa.com. Let's speak fast English. Let's talk about it. Let's imagine the scene. You have had a long, hard day at work, so you come home, sit down on the couch, you're ready to relax and watch the new English TV show or movie that you've been waiting to watch. You turn on the TV and Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're talking so fast. Can other people actually understand this? Is there some kind of secret? Do they know something that you don't know? Well, today you are going to learn what makes American English fast so that you can understand fast English and speak like an American yourself. To help you never forget what you've learned, I've created a free PDF worksheet that you can download for today's lesson. You will find all of the pronunciation points, sample sentences, and you can answer Vanessa's challenge question at the end of the worksheet. Make sure you click on the link in the description to download it now. In today's lesson, you will see my most popular videos about how to speak fast English so that you can speak fast too. Let's watch. Today we're going to talk about the 10 most important sentences in English, at least according to me. <laughs> and because you use these sentences a lot, all the time in daily conversation, it's a great opportunity to practice using them naturally and pronouncing them correctly. So if you say them three or four times each day, you want to make sure that you're pronouncing them correctly and that's what we're going to do today. Your challenge today is to try to imitate and repeat exactly what I say. I don't care if you're on the train, if you're at work and your boss is looking at you, I don't care where you are, it's your job to speak out loud because if I say them, it's okay, but I already know how to say them. So it's your job to practice and to use those pronunciation muscles to the fullest. All right, let's start with the first sentence. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. This is our first sentence today. Hey, how's it going? And the most common response, which is pretty good. So let's break down this expression. Hey, pretty clear. Can you repeat that with me? Hey. Then the next part, how's it going? Here in the middle, it sounds like a Z sound. How's it, how's it going? With the word going, we're gonna cut off the G at the end. So make sure you say going. Can you say this all together with me? Try to imitate with me, ready? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna pause in just a moment after we practice the reply. The reply is pretty good, pretty good. Now, if you wanna sound like an American, the word pretty, even though it has T's, it's gonna sound like a D sound. So try to say it with me, pretty, pretty, pretty. And then that final word, good, good. Make sure that your lips are kind of out a little bit, good. Good. Can we put it all together? Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, let's try to imitate this full sentence together and the reply, and then I'm gonna pause so that you can say it yourself out loud no matter where you are. All right, let's say it together. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. All right, I'm gonna pause and it's your turn. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the second sentence. The second sentence is, do you want to go? Do you want to go? And you might say this when you want to invite someone to an event or maybe to your house or if you want to tell them to go to a restaurant with you. And it's a great expression for someone who you just met if you want to, you know, continue spending time with them. So let's break down the pronunciation for this common question. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Why does the first two words sound like ju? Do you becomes ju, kind of a j, j sound, ju. And then what about wanna go, wanna go? Want to go are all of the words, but you're gonna combine want and to to become wanna, wanna. This is really common in conversational English, so let's try to say this full question together. Do you want to go? 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 <laughs> All right, try to imitate this with me. Are you ready? Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Do you want to go to the park? Do you want to go to the restaurant? <laughs> okay, I'm going to pause and I want you to say this by yourself. Go ahead. 
Great work. Let's go on to the third sentence. The third and fourth sentence are, I'm not sure and I don't know. These both mean the same thing, but the first one, I'm not sure, is a little more casual and you might use this more in daily conversation. So if you say it quickly, it sounds like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Let's break this down. Listen carefully, especially to that second word, not. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Do you hear t the T sound? I'm not sure? Not really. <laughs> Often in daily conversation in fast English, the T at the end of words is cut off. So your tongue is going to be at the top of your mouth, almost going to make the T sound, but there's no air that comes out. So let's practice saying this, especially with that T stopped at the top of your mouth. Can you do it with me? I'm not sure. I'm not Sure, I'm not, not, not. All right, let's focus on that last word. Sure, sure, sure. Do you see my lips here? Can you say it with me? Sure, sure. Can we say this all together? I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna pause and now it's your turn. Go ahead. Great work, let's go on to the fourth sentence. The fourth sentence, as I just mentioned, is, I don't know, I don't know, and there are a lot of different ways you can pronounce this, so let's start with maybe the most clear and then working down to the least clear. So let's start with, I don't know, I don't know. Do you notice that that T in the contraction don't is similar to not in the previous sentence? That T, your tongue is at the top of your mouth, but you're not letting the air come out to finish t, that t sound. So it's gonna sound like I don't, don't know. If you can see inside my mouth at the moment, you'll see that my tongue is stopped up there. Don't, don't, but I'm not saying don't, I don't know. Usually that T in negative contractions is cut out. If you'd like to see the natural pronunciation for 81 contractions, I made a video, you can watch it up here. I hope that, that will be useful to you. But let's say this in the most clear way. I don't know. Can you imitate that with me? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is a little less clear. You could say, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. It kind of sounds like D-U-N-N-O, don't know. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and you would use this in familiar situations. I don't recommend using this to your boss or maybe in a work situation, just because it's, it's really relaxed, so you need to be in a really relaxed environment. But you could say, uh, I don't know. Do you know how many people are in your city? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> All right, there is a couple more ways that you can pronounce this, so let's go to another one that is even less clear. And let's take that same pronunciation and cut out the D sound. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Can you say that slowly with me? I don't know. It sounds weird when you're saying it slowly, but don't worry. When you say it quickly, it's perfectly natural. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. There's no D sound here, I don't know like the previous two, instead you're just cutting that out. I don't know. Okay, let's go on to the last one. And it is the least clear, but native speakers will definitely understand what you're saying. In this final way to pronounce I don't know, you're really gonna be cutting out all of the words and you're just gonna be leaving some sounds in some intonation. So you're gonna say, uh, uh. <laughs> It seems really strange to just say this by itself, but trust me, native speakers say this a lot. So I'm going to say it slowly and I want you to try to imitate my intonation. Imagine that you're kind of riding this wave of intonation and you're going to say it exactly with me and then I'm going to pause and we're going to practice these clear and unclear pronunciations together. All right, are you ready? Can you imitate with me? Uh, uh. Oh. Let's say someone asks you, how long has Vanessa been teaching online? And if you respond with, huh, it means that maybe you don't really care about the answer. It's not something that's important to you. If you said, I don't know, 
it really just means you don't have that information. But if you said, uh, it's so relaxed that it means I don't really care. So you could use this in another situation that maybe isn't rude. Make sure that you're in a, a really casual, comfortable situation. If someone asked you, oh, I'm trying to make this dish. Do you know how many eggs I should put in? You could say, uh, maybe look it up. Uh, uh, <laughs> look it up. Because you're with your family or your friends and it's something that's not so important. But if someone asks you something you know, really important, maybe something emotional or sentimental or especially something for your work that's really important, don't say, uh, because it's too relaxed. So this is for really casual situations and I'm certain that you're going to hear this in TV shows and movies. So let's take a moment to try to pronounce I don't know in these casual, comfortable ways. I want you to choose which one you'd like to say. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Or uh. -uh. <laughs> you can choose which one you'd like to imitate. I'm going to pause and give you a moment to say it yourself. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the next one. Our fifth sentence is about the weather because it's really common in almost every country and every culture to have small talk about the weather. And it's really true in the US. We have small talk about the weather all the time. When I was taking a walk the other day, my neighbor was sitting on his front porch and he said, oh, it's a hot one today, huh? And I said, yep, yeah, sure is. <laughs> so let's practice this sentence together to talk about the weather. You can change the word hot for cold rainy, snowy, whatever you'd like, but let's practice with hot and cold because those are, you know, the most common. So let's say this sentence together. It's a hot one today. It's a hot one today. It's a hot one today. Or it's a cold one today. It's a cold one today. What does one mean? Why are we saying one here? Well, it just means day. It's a hot day today. But we use this in daily conversation a lot, so I wanted to make sure that you are familiar with this sentence. And you can use this when you're talking about the weather to sound more like a native speaker. So let's slow it down and practice that pronunciation word by word. It's a hot one today. Did you notice something about the word hot? What happened to that final letter? Well, we have a theme here. It's gone. Your tongue is at the top of your mouth. You're going to say hot but instead of letting the air through, your tongue just sticks there. So let's say it together and make sure that you say the word hot correctly. It's a hot one today. Today, today. Do you notice what's happening with this final word? It's T-O-D-A-Y, but do you hear today, today? You might hear this in maybe uh, an audio that goes with your textbook. Today is a lovely day. But in daily conversation, we hardly ever pronounce this full word. Instead, you're going to cut out that O sound and just say t day, t day. Just make that T sound t day, today, today, today. Can you say that final word with me? Today, today, today. Okay, let's say this full sentence together, and I hope that you can use it in your daily conversations when you're having some small talk about the weather. It's a hot one today. It's a hot one today. It's a hot one today. All right, your turn. Go ahead. I want you to say it yourself out loud. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the next one. The sixth most important or most used sentence in English, according to me, is you got to try it. You got to try it. This is something that is commonly used when someone is suggesting something or maybe they're telling you about a new restaurant or a new drink or some experience that they've had and they want you to also do it. They might say, oh, you gotta try it. You gotta try it. And this word gotta is really common in daily conversation, but it's a reduction of a couple other verbs. So the full sentence could be you have got to try it but have got to is reduced to gotta. In fact, I have a full pronunciation lesson for this word, gotta, have to, wanna, all of these kind of reductions. You can check out the link up here to get some more detailed pronunciation for that word and also how to use it. But let's talk about this sentence, you gotta try it. You gotta, gotta. Do you notice that the middle of this word doesn't sound like gotta? with a T. Instead, it sounds like a D. This is going to be similar to the word we talked about earlier, pretty. Pretty good. Do you remember that from number one? Pretty good. Pretty good. Here, it's going to sound like God, 
a uh, gada gada just add a d in the middle especially if you want to sound like an american english speaker that's what we do we add d's in the middle of words all the time so try to say those first two words with me you gotta you gotta you gotta all right let's say this full sentence you gotta try it you gotta try it do you hear it with that t pronounced at the end well, now you are an expert at T's at the end of sentences, and you know that that T is cut short. So let's try to say that together. Gotta try it. it. You can see my tongue at the top of my mouth. It's just stopped there. There's no air coming out. So let's say that full sentence together, and remember to say gotta and it, it, it. Are you ready? You gotta try it. You gotta try it. You gotta try it. All right, it's your turn. Go ahead. Excellent work, let's go on to the next one. The seventh most common, most important, most useful expression according to me is thanks, I appreciate it. Thanks, I appreciate it. There's a couple different ways to pronounce this, whether it's clear or a little bit less clear, but let's start with the first word. Thanks, thanks. Make sure that when you say the TH, your tongue is between your teeth and you're also feeling a little stream of air coming out. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. We use this word all the time and you can use it by itself, but if you want to really show your appreciation, you can add another sentence. Thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Let's focus on that second part quickly. I appreciate. Appreciate. Can you say that word with me? Appreciate. Appreciate. Am I saying appreciate? Nope, here the T's cut out again. I appreciate it, it. Oh, that another T is gone. All those T's are gone, having a vacation, having a good time together. They're not in this sentence. So make sure that there's not air coming out of your mouth finishing that T sound. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. This is the most clear way, I appreciate it, because you're saying the first part of that word, appreciate it appreciate it. Can we say this full part together clearly before we go on to the relaxed one? Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks. I appreciate it. I hope you can repeat with me really quick. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, let's go on to the relaxed version. Let's imagine that someone does something pretty simple like open the door for you. You're carrying a lot of groceries and someone in front of you decides to be kind and holds the door open for you. You can say, thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What happened to I appreciate it? Well, those parts of the sentence are just gone. So you're going to just start with the P sound. Appreciate. Appreciate it. So you can say this all together. Try to imitate it with me. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Let's say it together. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. I want to pause and I want to let you try to say this all together, try to say it in that relaxed way. Thanks, appreciate it, go ahead. Excellent work, let's go on to the next one. The eighth sentence is a response to thanks, I appreciate it. If you are the one holding the door for someone else and someone says to you, oh thanks, appreciate it, what can you say in return? You don't wanna just stand there and go, mm, it's a little bit awkward. <laughs> so one of the most common sentences that you could say is no problem, no problem. No problem. You could say you're welcome, but it's a little bit strong maybe for this simple act of kindness. If you dropped your groceries and someone helped you to pick them up, you could say, oh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. That's fine because it's a little bit more effort. But one of the most common things to say is no problem. No problem. So let's break this down. No problem. 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 Let's focus on the middle of that word. Problem problem. <laughs> Here, your lips are just kind of smacking together a little bit. Blum, blum, blum. <laughs> that B and L together is the focus of this word. You want to make sure that you're pronouncing it correctly. So let's practice the word problem. Blum, blum. <laughs> it looks a little bit funny, but don't worry about it. I hope that, I hope that you're on the train right now and everyone around you is thinking, why is that guy saying 
problem, problem, problem. <laughs> you are improving your English, so who cares what they think? Let's say this together. No problem, blum, blum. No problem, no problem, no problem. All right, I'm gonna pause and I want you to say it by yourself. Go ahead. Great work, let's go on to the next one. The ninth and the tenth expression are common ways to say goodbye. At the beginning of this lesson, we started with number one, some common introductions, some common ways to say hello, and then some common expressions used in conversation, and now we're finishing up the conversation. So you might say, see you later. See you later. This is the clearest way to say it. See you later. See you later. Let's practice this slowly and go word by word. See you. You later. Later. Here we have another T that's changed to a D. You don't say later. See you later. Americans would never say that. <laughs> so let's practice changing the T to a D. See you later. See you later. See you later. See you later. Later. Er, later. <laughs> I hope you can pronounce that with me. Now let's go on to a little more relaxed and maybe a more common version, especially because see you later is just a casual way to say goodbye, so you're most likely already going to be in a familiar situation. Let's change you to ya. See ya later. See ya later. That final word is the same, later, but the middle word, you, which is clearly pronounced, changes to ya. See ya later. See ya later. Can you say that with me? See ya later. 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 Okay, I'm going to pause and I want you to say this yourself. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the final expression. The tenth most common, most useful, most important expression is let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe someone asks you, do you want to go? Do you want to go? One of our earlier sentences. And then you talk a little bit and you say, hey, let's go. I want to eat. Let's go to that restaurant you mentioned. Let's go to the movies. Let's go. Let's go. So let's say this slowly together. I want you to imitate my voice. Try to say it slowly and clearly with me and then we'll speed it up. Let's go. Let's go. When you say the T in the middle of the word let's, your tongue is just tapping the top of your mouth. Let's. Let's. It's stopping up there and then going to the S sound. Let's go. Let's go. Can you say that with me? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, I'm going to pause and I want you to say it by yourself. Go ahead. Excellent work. You used those pronunciation muscles. You imitated 10 valuable, important, common sentences in English. I hope that you'll use these sentences again and again so that you can really sound like a native speaker and also pronounce them like a native speaker. Today, we're going to practice the most important introduction sentences in English, at least according to me, <laughs> because you're going to say these natural sentences again and again in daily conversation. This is a great opportunity to practice pronouncing them correctly each time that you use them. Number one. Hi, I'm Vanessa. What's your name? Oh, of course you're not going to say Vanessa. <laughs> you're going to say your name, but let's slow this down so that you can say it naturally. Hi, I'm plus your name. Hi, I'm Vanessa. What's, make sure that you say tss, that T-S here. What's your name? What's happening with the word your here? Notice my lips when I say your compared to your. It's a little bit different. It kind of sounds like Y-E-R. This is the most natural fast pronunciation for the word your. So let's say that quickly. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Hi, I'm Vanessa. What's your name? I'm kind of emphasizing what's your name? Because I just said mine, so I want to know now what's your name? Hi, I'm Vanessa. What's your name? Now I'm going to pause and I want you to fill in your name and I want you to say this sentence out loud. Practice speaking. Are you ready? Hi, I'm... What's your name? Go ahead. Excellent work. Let's go on to the second sentence. Sentence number two. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Lots is going on in this seemingly simple sentence. Let's start at the beginning. Nice.
Say it with me. Nice to meet. To meet. Here, the word to is being reduced to simply t, just the sound t. The vowel o is gone. So we're going to link together to meet. To meet. But do you hear that final t sound on the word to meet? T? Not really. <laughs> Instead, your tongue is going to be at the top of your mouth, ready to make the t sound, but no air comes out. So we're going to say to meet. My tongue is stopped at the top of my mouth. To meet, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can you say that out loud with me? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm going to pause and I want you to say it by yourself. Nice to meet you. Go ahead. Excellent work. Let's go on to the third one. Sentence number three. I'm from the US and you? You're probably not from the US if you're watching this, so you can fill in the name of your country. I'm from Mexico. And you? I'm from India. And you? Let's break down this pronunciation. I'm from, F-R-O-M, sounds like a U here. From. I'm from, plus your country. And then you want to reciprocate and ask the other person. And you? Did I say and you? In this situation, the D is cut off. It's gone. It's on vacation somewhere. So we're just going to say an. And you? And you? And you? <laughs> Where are you from? And you? Let's say this all together. I'm from the U.S. And you? I'm from the U.S. And you? I'm going to pause. I want you to fill in your country and say it out loud. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go to the next one. When you first meet someone, it's common to talk about your surroundings. Maybe you're both at the grocery store or you're both at a friend's birthday party. You have this in common, so you're going to talk about it. Let's imagine that you go to another country and you're talking with someone and they ask you, how long have you been here? You might say, I've been here for two weeks. I've been here for two weeks. I've been here for two weeks. You can also substitute if you're at a university or maybe if you're at a job. I've worked here for two weeks. I've studied here for two years. You could change that verb, but we're just going to stick with I've been here for two weeks. Let's break this down. I've been. This sounds like a short I. B-I-N. Been. I've been here for why does for change to fur? I don't know, but that's what happens. So this is going to sound like F-E-R, fur. Kind of sounds like the fur of an animal, which is F-U-R, but same pronunciation. Fur, two weeks. I've been here for two weeks. I've been here for two years. I've been here for five minutes. I've been here for two weeks. Let's say that quickly one time, and then I'm going to pause so that you can say it yourself. I've been here for two weeks. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the next one. Common introduction number five is, what do you do? <laughs> this is asking, what's your job? This is the most common way to ask what someone's job is. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? A lot of this is linked together, kind of mumbled together, so I want to help you pronounce it in the same way. What do you? What do you? Can you say that with me? What do you? What do you? The T in what is cut out and instead it's replaced by the word do, which is linked together. What do you do? Notice my lips aren't really moving much here. What do you do? What do you do? Inside my mouth, my tongue is moving, <laughs> but on the outside, what do you do? What do you do? It's not moving that much. So I want you to say this with me. Let's go slowly and then we'll speed it up. What do you do? 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 All right, it's your turn. Go ahead. Excellent work. Let's go on to the next one. The sixth sentence is, I'm a designer. I work for the marketing department. If you don't know how to describe your job or what your job title is, you can check out this video I made, 100 Job Titles. Hopefully it will help you to be able to describe your job in these introduction situations. You could say, I'm a designer. I work for, we're using that same pronunciation again, F-E-R. I work for 
the marketing department. Make sure that if you use this reduction for, you're speaking a little bit quickly, you're linking things together. If you said, I work for the, it's a little bit weird. You need to link it together if you're gonna use that reduction because the point of a reduction is to reduce your speech to make it faster. So let's say that together. I'm a designer. I work for the marketing department. I work for the marketing department. You can link those two words together. Work for, work for the marketing department. I work for the marketing department. I'm a designer, I work for the marketing department. All right, it's your turn, go ahead. Great work, let's go to the next one. The seventh introduction is for when you have a mutual friend. Let's imagine that you're walking down the street and you see your friend James and James is walking with someone else and he introduces that person to you. So you start to have a conversation with that person. You could ask them, so how do you know James? This just means, where did you meet? Do you work together? Are you his brother? <laughs> What's the situation? And this is pretty common. Maybe you're at a party and you're just making small talk with people. If that person who's hosting the party is James, everyone at the party knows James. So it's a good question to ask. So how do you know James? Great, you're just kind of figuring out each other's relationships. Let's pronounce this together. So, it's a good way to introduce a new topic. So, how do you know James? This is similar to, what do you do? <laughs> that kind of lazy, not moving your lips very much type of pronunciation. So, how do you know James? So, how do you know James? How do you know James? Can you say that with me? So. How do you know James? How do you know James? So how do you know James? I'll say that one more time and then I'm gonna pause so that you can say it yourself. So how do you know James? Go ahead, it's your turn. Great work, let's go to the next one. In continuing with this same idea, this person who knows James might say, oh, we used to work together. We used to work together. Used to? often gets reduced to used to. We used to work together. We used to work together. Let's break down this sentence. We used to work. This is a lovely word. It has an O, but it sounds like W-E-R-K. Work together. Together. It almost sounds like ta, T-A. Together. Together. We used to we used to work together. We used to work together. And when you link used to together, that means that you're reducing and you're sounding more natural. So let's say this full sentence, and then I'm gonna pause so that you can say it yourself. We used to work together. We used to work together. We used to work together. Go ahead, it's your turn. Excellent work. Let's go to the next one. The ninth introduction or common expression that's used the first time you meet someone is, I don't wanna hold you up. I don't wanna hold you up. This is probably what you would say at the end of that quick conversation together when you first meet someone. And it means, oh, I see that you probably have something else that you wanna do. Maybe you wanna go grocery shopping and you see each other at the grocery store. Or maybe you're trying to talk to the host of the party, James, and you just quickly had a quick conversation. So now you want to let that other person leave the conversation and continue what they were doing previously. So you might say, I don't wanna hold you up. This doesn't mean hold you physically, but here, let's break down this sentence. I don't, hmm, the T here is cut out. Your tongue is gonna be at the top of your mouth, but you're not gonna let the air through. I don't wanna hold you up. Want to is linked together and makes wanna. I don't wanna hold you up. Great, let's say this all together. I don't wanna hold you up. I don't wanna hold you up. I don't wanna hold you up. It's your turn, say it yourself. I don't wanna hold you up, go ahead. Thanks so much, great work. Let's go to the next one. And the final expression that's often used the first time you meet someone is, maybe see you around sometime. Maybe see you around sometime. What does this mean? It means that maybe you'll never see this person again, or maybe you will. I don't know. 
but it's just kind of a polite way instead of saying, okay, let's make plans to see each other on Saturday, five o'clock. No, you're just saying, okay, it was nice to see you. Maybe see you again sometime. <laughs> so you might say, maybe see you round sometime. What's happening with the word around? Well, we're cutting off the first letter, we're cutting off the last letter, and we're just saying the middle part, round, round. This means around town or just somewhere in general. This is the common reduction when we're speaking quickly. You'll probably hear people say this in movies or TV shows or in conversations, and now you can say it too. Let's say it all together. Maybe see you around sometime. 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 All right, I'm gonna pause and it's your turn. Go ahead. Great work. Congratulations on speaking real English with fast, natural, reduced pronunciation. Don't forget to click on the link in the description to download the free PDF worksheet for today's lesson. Never forget what you've learned. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me. I will see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet for this lesson. With this free PDF, you will master today's lesson and never forget what you have learned. You can be a confident English speaker. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a free English lesson every Friday. Bye.